Hello everyone, James here with you today. Uh, and today's video is looking at using the revision table inside of Inventor. And we're going to grab the revision table functionality from inside Vault and place it into Inventor. So to get started, what we're going to do is have a look at uh, firstly the setup of the revision table tool inside of Vault. So let's go to our administrative tools and head over to the revision table so in the revision table, this won't be set up by default. So when you first open up the revision table tool inside Vault, this will be disabled. So you'll actually just need to tick this box here to enable the revision table. Once it's been enabled, you'll then have a default set of mappings done in your list here, uh, which will look like this. Uh, and you can go and customize this mapping to suit however you want. So just to show you how it's all done, the rev is mapped from the system property inside Vault Revision. Description is mapped from whatever I want. And in this case, I'm going to map this from the comment system property so that whenever I put a comment on that transition between work in progress and released, that comment will be put into the description on the revision table. Now, I might not want some of these mappings. Let's say I want to remove the zone mapping and put in my own one, author. Let's map that from a user-defined property called author. Now we can have as many of these mappings as we want, um, but it is important to remember that these have no bearing on what's actually displayed inside of Inventor. So you can have all these mappings and still not be showing any of the fields that are actually doing any mapping at all. So just remember these are just mappings. In 2014, you have some really cool content filtering and, uh, and I guess, view setup stuff for your revision table. So you, uh, you might want to look through um, some of these settings. They're actually pretty cool. Uh, but today, we don't really have enough time to look through them all, so let's just stick with the mapping. Once the mapping is complete, we can then uh, start using the revision table. Now, I'm just in Inventor at the moment. I'm just playing around with a part here. I just made this part out of uh, the two sketch slot things, so I was just playing around with that before we started. Okay, so I have that part checked into Vault now. Let's go ahead and change the state on that because I want it released straight away because it's really uh, not part of the demonstration. Now let's start with a new drawing template. So the drawing is actually where the revision table will go in. Now I've got two drawing templates here. This is my normal one, and this one already has a revision table inserted into it, which I might use a little bit later on, because uh, this is actually a really nice way of handling your revision tables. Uh, but this one here does not have the revision table inserted into it, and I've actually just left this one here so that I can show you how to insert it and configure it. So let's go ahead and create a new drawing. Let's place in the hook that we had just before. Oops, oh well, that'll do. And let's just move them around so that they're uh, not in awful spot like that. Okay, so what's happened now is I've inserted my part into my drawing. All the properties have come across, uh, except for the revision property, which you can see there is missing. So what I need to do, and if you remember from my last video, we spoke about how to get all that mapping happening. So let's check this document in and let's just save it as the normal name. Once that's checked in, it will then be assigned a revision, which will then need to update the drawing. So as you can see, the, uh, the, the drawing has now been checked in, but we need to update it so that that revision information gets populated in here. Uh, and while we're at it, let's go and insert our revision table. Now remember how I told you the revision table is just mapping inside when we set up the settings? Uh, and that is evident when we go and insert the revision table uh, in here. It actually is looking the way it should do at the moment, but that's because I've got uh, my styles already set up. So when I look in my styles editor, you can see that I've got my rev table here and I've got my fields looking exactly the way I've got it in here. So this is still using the functionality from the rev revision table uh, styles and standards but it's just using it as a mapping from Vault as well. So it's a little bit more functional. So 
So just be aware, if you're not liking the layout of your revision table, then you'll probably need to just customize that in your styles editor. But I'm happy with mine, so let's, I'm just going to go and space them out a little bit more maybe. Um, now I'm happy with it, so I want to go and check that in. And that all looks good. Right, so there is a next part that's a little bit tricky that we want to talk about. So the next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and change the state on this to released. And whatever I type in here, I want this information to be pushed into here. So this comment is mapped from this comment box into the description area of my revision table. The problem is though that if I type in whatever I want here, it goes straight into released which actually means I can't change the document or I can't modify the document because the document's released. Most re released states are a locked state or a read-only state. So I need to be able to push data into this revision table even though the document is locked. So let's look at how I go about doing that. Okay, so let's go ahead and look in my lifecycle. Now, here's my life cycle, and the flexible life cycle is the one I'm using for this particular example. So let's go and edit that one and have a look at the transition between work in progress and released. So this is the transition that I'm about to perform. So when I jump into my actions, I've already got it set up, but you'll need to go and tick this box here, which is synchronize properties and update view using job server. So what this will actually do is it'll try and edit that document. So it'll try and jump into that DWG that I just had up on the screen, update the revision table and, uh, and synchronize all the properties and everything like that before creating a DWF. Problem is the document will be locked. So the job server will actually fail to do that because the document is locked. So a little way around that is when I go over to the released state here, I go over to my security and you can see this James T user here. So most released states have the everyone read and deny to everything else. What I've done is I've taken off the, uh, the deny to everyone else and gone and allowed my James T user modify permission to the released state. This, uh, this hypothetically would be a job server user and that's what you'd normally use in this case. Uh, so you would allow the job server to modify the released documents but no one else. So most people will have a deny and uh, one user will have this modify capability. So this user here needs to be logged into the job server. So let's close all that down and let's have a look at our job server. I'm just going to pause this for a moment. It is already paused. And, uh, and have a look at who's logged in to the job server and you can see it's the James T user that's logged into the job server. And you can see uh, all the settings are right for my login which, uh, which is very good. Actually let's just go and resume that because it's got a synchronized properties on my other one as well. Alright so now that that's all done I can head back into uh, Inventor here and go ahead and change state on this drawing. And in here, I'm just going to go and put first release. And um, you can go and put it other information in there. Sent to client. So this is the information here that I want to be pushed into here. So when I go OK, it locks the document, everything looks normal, and you can see Nothing has been pushed into here, so if I wanted to modify this, I wouldn't be able to. But the job server can. So let's go ahead and make sure the job server's on it. Now, if the job server ran out of jobs, um, to get it to start working again, you can just pause it and resume it, and then it goes and does the, uh, the jobs for you. Okay, so that job server's now finished. Uh, we can uh, go and have a look at our drawing. So you can see, by the way, this one is now uh, out of date. And you can see that there. Let's go and get revision on that. And go OK. And I'll go and grab the one with all the information in it, which looks good. Let's go and make sure it all looks good in Vault. As you can see, the document is locked. When I look at the preview, the preview of the DWIF has all the revision information in there from the job server. 
which is all really good. Now to prove it wasn't a fluke, let's go and do it again. So let's head out of that, back into Inventor, and let's say we need to make a change to it. So let's go and change state, back to work in progress. Uh, as you can see, it's still sitting on revision A and no other line in the revision block. As soon as I go and check it out, it's going to want to update those properties and add a new line, plus update the revision in here. So let's go and, I don't know, add some color to it or whatever you want to do. Uh, that'll do. Check it in. Yes, we want to save those changes. And change state. And again, we're going to go and put a comment in here. Added some color. All right, and again, to make our job server start running, if, uh, if you don't want to wait around for it to run itself, just pause it and resume it, and, uh, and your jobs will continue working. Okay, now that that's, uh, that's done, again, when we look over here, we'll see that the document is out of date, so let's get revision on it again, and we can now see all the information is entered into the revision block exactly the way I want it to be. Okay, so the only other thing I wanted to show you just before I leave is in Inventor, it's not a bad idea to have your revision block inserted already before you start. So that's just a bit of a hint. If you don't want to have to do this every time, just insert that revision table straight away from in here. And, uh, and then you won't have to worry about it. It'll just keep building up as you go through the revisions. So that's, uh, that's how to use it. Hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.